The statistical system, as we all know, is called upon to take decisive uh, action to transform how data and statistics are produced and disseminated to inform development policy decision with the vital support of governments and closer partnership uh, with national statistical offices but also international partners, stakeholders uh, from academia, civil society, the private sector and the public at large. This will entail the concerted coordination of existing uh, efforts and the strategic uh, investment of resources in order to address uh, existing gaps in the technical institutional capacity of national statistical systems and thereby improve the coverage, quality, and timeliness of uh, data and statistics. It is strategic to develop uh, and implement statistical capacity activities to respond uh, to new initiatives at global, regional, and national level. The implementation of the Agenda th uh, 2030 raises new challenges for official statistics, and these initiatives include statistics for the SDGs, uh, the increased use of uh, geospatial information, and the modernization of official statistics. The development of the Cape Town Global Action Plan and the UNEC Roadmap on Statistics for Development 
uh, is a, a strategic priorities and key action for capacity development going also beyond the SDGs. Investing uh, in statistical system must uh, become a strategic priority for developing countries and their development to cooperation partners uh, alike. Commitments for the effectiveness of capacity development uh, focus on the ownership of partner uh, countries, on direct the activities to the achievement of verifiable uh, results, mutual accountability on progress made and possible reuse of products and tools, for example, to neighboring countries' inclusive partnerships. In implementing these commitments, we must strive to leave no one behind. Development cooperation can help uh, developing countries produce and use more and better data in a responsible and transparent way for good policy outcomes. And this session is a good uh, opportunity of meeting dialogue and of deepening on the team of capacity development with a wide participation not only of insiders but also of national and international institutions that invest in the value of capacity development in a partnership approach and medium and long term vision. Having mined uh, policies of uh, cooperation and development, we are very pleased to start with uh, Luca Maestripieri, Deputy Director General and Principal Director for General Affairs and Development uh, Cooperation Policy Orientation in the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperations. We have uh, eight speakers today. We have not enough chairs. And after first speaker, I would like to anticipate the intervention of Mariana Kozeva, who has to take uh, flight uh, this afternoon. <laughs> anyway, at the end of any intervention, we can sit, I think, here. <laughs> we will rotate, no? <laughs> During the session. And please, uh, Luca Maestripieri, now the floor is yours. And I kindly ask you to stay in uh, 10 minutes. Eh? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And it's a very good pleasure for me to be here today. Um, actually, you, you will listen from me and then from the agency for development of the Italian cooperation. You know, I've been working in the development cooperation department of the ministry now for six years. And uh, so just to give you just uh, uh, some hints on the fact that uh, we, we had the, the law who reformed our system very recently and uh, now three years. And uh, we keep as a ministry the strategic uh, direction and also other competences concerning particularly the relationship with the multilateral organizations, while the agency is particularly devoted to bilateral cooperations with uh, um, developing countries. Uh, so in these six years, I can testify the, the growing importance of statistics in in our system, and particularly after the uh, adoption of the Agenda 2030. Uh, the implementation of UN Agenda 2030 for sustainable development heavily relies on data availability and strengthened statistics capacities. It does so in order to measure the initial distance each country has with respect to the targets foreseen for each sustainable development goal. It does so because the agenda's implementation is based on constantly monitoring the progress in reaching the SDGs. It does so because progress towards the SDGs will ultimately depend on our ability to analyze the situation on which we act upon and the effectiveness of the policies we elaborate in order to change and improve those situations. And both activities are based on data availability and statistical capacity. In the development cooperation sector, statistical information has a strategic role as an indispensable element both for policy planning and definition and for effective governance in each country. 
It is a medium-term issue that requires a long-term vision. Up to date, to date, reliable and comparable statistics are essential instruments in order to understand, decide, and intervene. As Joseph Stiglitz, winner of a 2001 Nobel Prize in Economics said, if we measure the wrong things, we do the wrong things. This approach was strongly reaffirmed in the 2014 report of the United Nations Secretary General's Advisory Panel on Data Revolution, which was co-chaired by Professor Giovannini. The report acknowledges the need to dispose of more diverse, integrated, timely, and trustworthy information in order to monitor progress, hold governments accountable, and foster sustainable development. Currently, the issue of measuring progress toward the SDGs, especially in developing countries, is one of the main themes in the relevant global fora, including the UN, where the UN Statistical Commission is playing a major role in shaping systems fit for the new and emerging challenges, and where ISTAD has also given crucial contribution. The Italian cooperation attaches a strategic importance to training and capacity development in the statistics sector, and is particularly committed in implementing technical cooperation activities in order to strengthen national statistical systems of our partner countries and to promote cooperation across statistical agencies and sound statistical practices. The main objective of these interventions is to assist beneficiary countries in the definition of their national development plans, to improve the functionality of their institutions, and to encourage their internal democratization process, which implies, for instance, the drawing up of accurate electoral lists. With the awareness and for this purpose, in the last few years, our cooperation has invested a large amount of resources to support statistical capacity development in Africa and beyond, and still continues to do so. Through, just to mention, through the bilateral channel, a noteworthy project is currently ongoing in Tanzania to improve the national statistics, statistical system and to support the realization of the register of population and housings. The program provides a collaboration between ISTAT, the Tanzania National Bureau of Statistics, and the RITA, Registration, Insolvency, and Trusteeship Agency. Censuses play a key role in the process of elaboration of development projects because of their ability to give a unique socioeconomical overview of the examined country. For this reason, in 2016 and 2017, Italy supported the realization of two of them, respectively the fourth and the fifth general censuses on population and housings, respectively in Burkina Faso and in Mozambique, for a total amount of more than two million euros. On a multilateral basis, it is worth mentioning the Italian contribution to the World Bank in a regional framework cooperation aimed at strengthening statistical capacity and the realization of service on families in order to an analyze the spread of extreme poverty and the situation of social inequalities. I can mention also the active membership in the IMF Afritex centers since their inception in 2003, where statistics capacity development plays a major role to support evidence-based macroeconomic policies and achieving the SDGs throughout the formulation and implementation of poverty reduction policies provided by the Poverty Reduction Strategy papers. Furthermore, I'd like to draw the attention to the important contribution of the Italian cooperation to the contrast to the phenomenon of the invisible children in sub-Saharan Africa. They are minors that were not registered at birth, whose right to identity is denied, and that are likely to become particularly vulnerable subjects in the future. Before planning interventions to strengthen education, healthcare, and more generally, children well-being, we have to know exactly how many of them are effectively in need. In line with this reasoning, between 2016 and 2018, Italy participated in various projects, 
in collaboration with UNICEF, especially in Ethiopia and Guinea, to improve the civil registration system and grant the minors, minors' right to, identi to identity, helping with around 3 million euros. Another important initiative is active in Burkina Faso in coordination with the Trento Autonomous Province with the same main goal. Our development action is in this sector goes beyond Africa since the Italian Development Corporation has funded a project with ISTAD partnership with the Inter-American Development Bank on strengthening the capacity building skills in the Caribbean countries in partnership with CARICOM. Overall, in the past three years, we have increased our support for capacity development in the statistical sector, and we have established also new initiatives like the recently operationalized program of strengthening statistical capacity in the small island developing states of the Pacific with the United Nations Institute on Training and Research that also involves the collaboration with ISTAT. To sum up, Italy intervenes in this field also by activating important and fruitful collaborations with national and international bodies that work to promote a real culture of the statistics. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. The technical cooperation with the third countries uh, is an important uh, aspect also within the European statistical system. The third countries, namely the ACP, Africa, the Caribbean, Pacific, Asia, Latin America, and Mediterranean countries, and the FAIR countries, Central and Eastern Europe, as well as the Tachis countries, new independent uh, states, former Russia and Mongolia, benefit from activities of cooperation financed by the European Commission and in a narrow partnership within the Euro um, European statistical system. That comprises the exchange and the development of know-how and technical competence between uh, countries in order to strengthen their statistical systems and to enable them to build and increase capacity to produce and use statistics, particularly in the pre-accession context. Priority setting on cooperation for the strengthening of statistical capacity raised the importance of the vision and specific uh, objectives of capacity development in the long term. We have the privile privilege to have uh, with us uh, uh, Director General of uh, Eurostat, uh, Mariana Kozeva. Please, uh, Mariana, the floor is yours. I have to admit that it's a very comfortable place because the air condition is behind me. <laughs> but this will not encourage me to speak longer, Giorgio, because I have to free a place there <laughs> for, for the other speakers. So thank you very much. It's a great opportunity for me to share a couple of uh, thoughts which I hope will stimulate uh, the discussion but also will generate uh, some partnerships for the future. First of all, you are already did my first part when you tried to enumerate areas where uh, the European Union and European statistical system would like to uh, focus the co technical capacity building and development. Um, if we follow the geographical principle, uh, one important part uh, are the enlargement countries. And there, the technical cooperation, of course, has the specific focus which was mentioned by you, namely the preparation for accession for joining the European Union, where uh, there are a number of particular focuses whether a statistical office uh, comply with the requirements to make their statistics comparable, harmonized before they join the European Union. And I know many countries uh, where statistics was the first chapter closed uh, successfully in the enlargement process. Uh, so um, this is also due to the excellent statistical capacity building. Another area, of course, are the neighborhood countries to the east, to the south, uh, where uh, the focus is um, mainly uh, to do uh, assessment of particular domains and of the overall capacity of statistical system, and then to invest uh, to improve the situation. 
And recently, the European Union has been very active in renewing its development policy together with the member states and putting a focus especially on Africa and also uh, starting with Asian Pacific countries and countries from Latin America. So the broad, the geographical scope is different. The, the focus in different areas of activities is different. But what I wanted to put as one of maybe the main issues to discuss is that we also see development and changes in the actions uh, which are included in capacity building. It's becoming more and more important and it was obvious from your presentation, Mr. Mastripieri, Luca. It's easy uh, to that we are moving more from capacity building, which is classical transferring of methodologies or teaching people how to calculate something to the projects which are infrastructural projects where the cooperation is needed not only between the two statistical offices, but also involve other parts. Like you mentioned the example of um, capacity of building of population registers, so business registers and strengthening the overall capacity of the statistical system. So this is maybe one of the, um, let's say challenges for all international organizations and sub national, uh, supranational organizations like Eurostat and uh, together with the, with the countries to see how we could respond uh, to this uh, challenge. Um, then uh, also we have universal challenges which were, um, which were generated by uh, the SDGs agenda and by digital technologies where we also uh, need to go beyond the pure statistical training and in partnership also with the private sector, NGOs, and uh, other organizations to see how to develop capacity building in the future. So uh, this is maybe my message. We have a number of events, even we use the opportunity. Thank you for inviting us here, because this was opportunity for me to speak with World Bank today and FAO. Uh, the people have to come to Rome in order to uh, do good plans for the future. Uh, because we really were discussing and uh, with Paris 21 as well how to uh, combine the efforts. This is the next message, the coordination and what on what to focus in years to come. Because in the years to come, we have the challenge of uh, big data, of new technologies. We have the census is coming, both population and agricultural census. And uh, uh, we also have the issue of strengthening the institutional framework of statistical offices, how they are uh, rooted in the country. Um, so this is, uh, let's say, my next message about the coordination and uh, cooperation. Finally, uh, maybe something uh, what we have to reflect within the European statistical system, because we have two ways to deliver uh, capacity building. Historically, one, or so far, Eurostat was performing its own program cooperating with other international organizations, but let's say doing a cooperation between our experts and the uh, experts, for example, of FAO, and the countries are doing their bilateral projects. And I think that in the future, we should keep the two strands, but also we have to discuss how we could, um, Georgia, you mentioned this in your introduction, how we should combine these two strands in the same way like we have partnership in the European statistical system on many subjects that we could jo do joint actions in capacity building as a European statistical system. We started quite recently to invite, for example, the enlargement countries to our uh, meetings, even at director general level, or on strategic conferences and topics to integrate them to participate in the discussions. Uh, but we also, we started to have uh, thematic workshops where we have experts from different countries in the EU together with Eurostat and in combination with other organizations to deliver uh, not just bilaterally but also to, to put the experts which have the same issue in a certain number of countries to participate in these events and to benefit from exchanging ideas and experiences. Of course, we also should um, embrace the new technologies because we could deliver capacity building in an innovative way and more effectively to really to bring value for money. And this is something for what we should come again to Rome to meet and to discuss with other international partners how to do that. 
So with that, I will stop because I want to, to be disciplined and not to get the red card from the chair. So thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of Eurostat, um, we are open to discuss uh, the new ways of cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. For Italy, international cooperation is not only a qualifying aspect, but a new and more modern form of foreign policy. The Italian Agency for Cooperation and Development is one of the key innovations established by the Italian law on international cooperation. The agency began uh, operating in January 2016 with the aim of aligning uh, Italy with its pr principal European and global partners in the endeavor of development complying with the demand for more professional and innovative uh, forms of cooperations, involving the methodological flexibility necessary in a continuously evolving uh, scenario. The Italian Agency for Cooperation and Development is an important partner promoting several projects of bilateral cooperation to enhance the statistical capacity in less advanced uh, countries. The effort made in the agency on activities of technical cooperation on the domain of statistics testify the importance of statistics as a cross-cutting issue and the priority on funding and investment in the statistical system to produce uh, reliable uh, information and high-quality data. ISTAT has uh, a long uh, tradition and a very good uh, partnership with the Italian Agency for Cooperation and Development. And today we are very happy to have uh, with us Simonetta Di Cori, who has been strongly committed in the area of statistics, promoting several projects on statistical capacity development. Simonetta Di Cori, please. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, and uh, I take this opportunity to thank officially on uh, behalf uh, of the uh, Ministry for Foreign Affairs uh, and uh, uh, Italian Agency. I would like to thank uh, ISTAT for, their, for your precious work uh, that you've done during uh, these last uh, 25 years. Without uh, uh, ISTAT assistance, uh, we couldn't do what uh, we did. I'm very sorry that Mr. Aleva just left. But I will repeat, I repeat. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm glad that you are here because uh, I wanted to thank you officially, you and Istat, for all precious work uh, that you've done during these last uh, 27 years, actually, our work together. Um, so I hope to not repeat uh, what uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Maestri Pieri, already uh, told you, but I would like to, to, to tell you a few lines that I prepared. In the recent years, the Italian cooperation has increased uh, its interest in contributing to improve statistical capacity building in partner countries, recalling the goal 17, target uh, 18, uh, and uh, evoking principle 10 of fundamental principle of official statistics that, just to be clear, says that bilateral and multilateral cooperation in statistics contributes to the improvement of systems of official statistics in all countries. We are planning to promote in partner countries data revolution and reliable statistics in order to deliver modern cooperation focused on good governance and tax policies, uh, care for the environment uh, and decent work. Also, we are strengthening our participation in sector initiatives and multilateral partnership to promote capacity building and the transfer of technology and know-how especially in order to strengthen national statistics systems and the related data collections and analysis, as well as to modernize the fiscal and taxation system needed in order to mobilize uh, domestic resources. We strongly believe that it is fundamental to have updated and reliable statistical data to monitor national trends for 2030 agenda implementation, and to evaluate policies adopted and projects implemented in partner countries. 
We are devoting special attention to the development of statistics that have a crucial role for social and economic development in partner countries and are fundamental for the achievement of sustainable development goals. Italy has joined the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data. The initiative's objective uh, is to define standards and principles for a new generation of data, overcome the lack of significant data, expand access to data, and promote its update, exchange and use, and strengthen the ability of users and producers to monitor and assess the progress made towards achievement uh, of the SDGs. Consistent with the Italian 2015 action plan, called Statistics as Knowledge, Essential for Cooperation, Strategic for Development, over the last three years, the Italian cooperation with essential support of ISTAT <coughs> and all their technicians uh, has strengthened efforts in these fields, population census, the ability of statistic institutes to develop modern systems, training uh, to young statisticians in the partner countries, gender statistics and agriculture statistics. We are following the Busan Action Plan for Statistics that stress the need to improve statistics and highlights a specific set of commitments based on a thorough analysis of the situation worldwide. Among them, the most challenging issues for governments and institutions dedicated to statistics are, according to us, the following. Civil registration and vital statistics systems, partnership for development, optimize the use of financial, human, and technological resources, new technologies and innovative methods of collecting and analyzing data. Last but not least, I would like to recall that as Stiglitz, Sen, and C wrote, what we measure affects what we do. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Statistical capacity development uh, is a cross-cutting uh, responsibility and it's important to recognize the value of partnership uh, with the other national and international statistical organizations. The NSI's perspective is essential to understand what we need and what we can provide. We are talking about the support to countries to develop and enhance their capabilities they need to produce official statistics and to implement international norms and standards. The main stakeholders and benefi beneficiaries uh, are national statistical offices and their national statistical system. The capacity development activities have to respond to the needs identified by countries, including through global assessments uh, of national statistical systems. Today we have an uh, NESAI's perspective, and I welcome Mira Nikic, Assistant Director of the Development Department, and Vladimir Sutic, Assistant Director for Business Statistics from the Statistical Office of the Republic of Serbia. Please, Mira, the floor is uh, yours. Thank you, uh, thank you all. I'm actually here to present you how capacity development looks in practice. For many of you, it's just a word because in many of cases you are beneficiary. We have a big opportunity and big luck to be at the same time beneficiary, but you will see later in my explaining why sometimes we are also doer or helper. Uh, last year, we successfully finished a national project it was straightening Serbian statistical uh, system through best practices, and one of our main collaborators were Italian statistics, especially in the area of metadata system. How it looks like? You always uh, know that projects, when they came, they are approved from European delegation, come to our office, and at in that moment, for the first time, we see actually what somebody wants from us as beneficiary. So we immediately sat down, decided in our own team what we really want. It wasn't so compliant by the project. And only uh, actually what we want to have on the other side, let's say, uh, reasonable people who will support us. Fortunately for us, and I will tell uh, this without uh, any 
without any uh, need to say this because we are in Rome and here, we were really delightful to work with Italian guys. Why? We have same mentality, we are pretty much loud, they never present themselves as a perfect system and they treat us as equal. How we started, now I am sorry because Mr. Car Carlo Vacari is not here, <laughs> but uh, what is very important, he came and then in the middle of the hallway, we, now Carlo, I'm in the same shoes like my colleague for this agency, I'm starting story with you. You came on our project and immediately on the corridor in our office, we decided what we're gonna do. I came and said, Carlo, I don't like what is he writing. And he said to me, we're gonna do whatever you want. So actually, what is important message that I want to share with you? Uh, Carlo and his team strongly supported our idea and strongly supported that we should initiate the process and our goal. They strongly support that we should develop <laughs> what we need, uh, come and achieve some by our need goal. Explain, uh, I want also to explain how it looks like in real life. If you have some labyrinth, maze, how American calls, and you will probably can imagine uh, Italian statistics like some kind of helicopters who, who tell us go there, go there, go there, and now you are on the goal. It wasn't like that. For the start, we were equal partners. So what was the uh, next thing that was very important? You remember I say we started to developing by ourselves everything. Uh, my brother is a psychiatrist and he always said in our family daily we are sharing therapy and accepting therapy, talking with other people. Same is with knowledge. We transfer knowledge all the time. But what is uh, important for us it's a very hard English word for me, acquiring. But actually, we were learning by doing our office. And uh, again, we, with strong support of the Italian colleagues, made things uh, regional. They allowed us actually to take uh, non-key experts <coughs> from our region, from our other neighbor's country, exactly for Montenegro and for Bosnia. So when you see like this, uh, this metadata system that we've developed and upgraded, you will say to me, okay, you did all things by yourself, why do you need beneficiary? Again, they support us to initiate the process. They actually give us the best they can, not best practice, but best fit. They discussed endlessly and endlessly with us every challenge and every opportunity that we have. They supported us to have some flexible and seeable results in the end. And what is most important, and again, I don't like this word leadership because it's too overused. Uh, actually, they inspired us, they motivate us to be better than we can ever imagine that we can be. So we always have boundary that we what we develop is developed for our national office, for our country they actually strongly supported us to share what we produce on new way with other neighbor countries. So actually, the results of product should be, sh has to be some normal result. Upgraded of our metadata system, develop some new things, blah, blah, blah. But actually, result of the project was much more. On 16 of October, with Mr. Aleva presenting us, we have big promotion of, of our own data processing system. Our director with our management decided to throw away authenticity of that system in Serbia and to share it with whole region. And not to share it in the way we just give you or uh, let you uh, give you know-how, how to do it. We share it what we learn actually from Italian partners. We involved five different national offices from Western Balkan in further development. So we learned, for example, at least how it looks like to be leaders, of course, from Italian colleagues. Uh, six months uh, pass since we finished project. Uh, emotions are a little bit down, of course. When we ask ourselves, my colleague Vladimir will, I'm certain, 
agree with me 100%. Uh, I don't want to mislead you, it's very hard. We starting something, both of us, from the scratch, it's frightening. But was it worth it? Was it worth it? I know Carlo can tell you probably how challenging is to discuss again and again and again, and after a few days somebody again asked from Serbian team, but why? It's very hard, this kind of process, but if you ask our office, we think that is only way how you should do capacity development from some other NSIs. But again, to emphasize the fact, they didn't left us with capacity de developed uh, some new area. They uh, made us capable to share and to make us actually helper and doer to uh, express this capacity development <coughs> to our other neighbors. So six months after finishing project, is, was it hard? Yes. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mira. Uh, building and strengthening capacities are key factors of uh, success for the implementation of the SDGs at country level, in particular when it comes to the production and use of SDG relevant data and statistics. In the context of the data revolution for sustainable development, national data ecosystems are expanding and new actors are emerging raising uh, new challenges while at the same time affording new opportunities to straighten national statistical systems. Capacity development approaches should evolve accordingly. Paris 21 addressed the issues of uh, new approaches with a framework on capacity development 4.0. Furthermore, Paris 21, who have been working in statistical capacity development for nearly 20 years, have recently synthesized their experience into a set of guiding principles for capacity development. Furthermore, Paris 21, together with the UN High Level Group on Partnership Coordination and Capacity Building, have developed and submitted at global level a questionnaire on the needs of the countries for capacity development. Today, we are pleased to have uh, with us uh, Johannes Juting, manager of Paris 21. Please, Johannes, the floor is yours. Well, um, good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I really would like to thank Mr. Chair, Marina, uh, for inviting me to this very exciting uh, conference and to this exciting topic of this afternoon, uh, capacity development, new challenges. Um, I'm also particularly impressed by the choreography that Marina has uh, put to place because I'm speaking after Mira and many things that I'm going to say in my remaining nine and a half minutes will echo, or Mar Mira has said it much better than I could do. So uh, it was, uh, it was, it, it's actually a very good choreography. So uh, what I wanted to do is um, basically three quick points. Um, I want to talk about, the title is Capacity Development New Challenges, but forgive me, I want to reflect on a few old challenges that I think are still remaining. They haven't gone away, unfortunately, so I want to say just two old sticky issues that I think we should reflect upon. Then I sort of, um, sort of, as an academic, I have to reply to that question. So I have to say a few, very few new challenges before I want to conclude <coughs> with some sort of more pointers of how Paris 21 thinks about capacity development in this new framework, capacity development 4.0. Just a few ideas for, for reflection. So to start with, I think the first, pl uh, first thing to say is the good news is we are not alone in the sense that building or developing capacity is an issue that uh, in all development aid cooperation, whereas my colleague from, from the aid agencies, I mean, this is in all sectors. It's, it's a big question. There's, I, I believe there was a study showing that $15 billion are spent every year on capacity development all over in different sectors from health, education. But the impact of those is very difficult to measure, and it's sometimes slightly dubious how much we actually have achieved. Now, on the area of capacity, 
If you look at the capacity score, I look at Haishan's uh, World Bank's, uh, uh, the indicator that the World Bank is producing, it's a composite index, and you can look it up at their website. And if you see the development of the index over the last 20 years, it's more or less, unfortunately, flat. Does it mean that we haven't been successful? I don't think so. But it still, it still seems to say that maybe in some areas we still need to improve. So on the first point, all challenges. Um, I wanted to sort of, one thing that hasn't come across is sustainability. I think many things that Mir Mira was saying is once, if we do technical assistance, if we go to the field, if we go to Serbia and do something in Serbia, or if we go to Rwanda, or for that matter, Senegal, once we have left, what will remain? The interesting thing is in training, that we train people in the statistical offices, and what many people, and we have lots of experience, and I'm pretty sure you too, they move on. They go to the uh, finance and planning ministries after our nice training, and the people move now on. Is that bad or is that good? I think it's good to train these people, but the, fortunate, the unfortunate heads of statistics are still a missing gap of people. So there is a question thinking about training in a sustainable way, which I think is, is an important point not to forget about. The second point, um, I think Mira also mentioned, and she gave it in, in a very nice way, are those things supply-driven, in particular by the aid agencies or by statistical offices or by Paris 21, because we believe we have the solution. We come, we, we have good ideas, good intention, we come to the countries and say, hey, here's my new NSDSs or here's my new uh, framework, wouldn't you like to take it? And of course many people say, yeah, it's a great idea. If somebody wants to help you, why would you say no? But I think Mira said that exactly the way how it should be, how it should be done. There should be a conversation. It should be more demand-led. It should be more also led by the client's perspective. I think this is a very sticky issue. And for many uh, parts in the aid agencies, we know often aid is supplied sometimes by supplier considerations because this is what we want to achieve. But we have to think it also from the demand side. And the second consideration is we often train, we often our look, our focus is on data production, but not so much on the user side. But now we know all with the SDGs, we have to focus much more on training also the users. It has to be the demand by the production, where does the more and better data should be going to? Who is using it? It's the user. It's the planning and finance ministries who hopefully will implement the data. So if you don't switch from a more production side to a user side, the sustainability is in question. So that's on the first point. On the second point, the new challenges. Well, I mean, I think we can all agree we can have a long laundry list. I just want to pick up two points. I think for a new capacity challenge for national statistical offices is in particular the, uh, and it has been said, the um, emergence of so many other actors that produce data, the private sector, civil society organizations, uh, to just to name two, and the statistical office sits sometimes in the middle and is sort of a bit unease how to relate to all these different data producers. So will these, the challenge is, can we empower national statistical offices to be at the center of this new emerging data ecosystem. And what is needed for this? Do you need more technical skills at the more R training and data revolution 4.0 training? Or would you need training on management? And would you need training on change management or on communication? I think you would need both, right? I think, and often if you look at capacity development programs, we have too much paid attention to technical skills and not enough on these more what I would call soft skills. That's one. A second, more disturbing issue in OECD countries and in poor countries alike, the unfortunate truth, which sometimes statisticians don't really want to hear, is that uh, I think we are in a very disruptive time now, where some of our core assumptions are called into question. Our core assumption is that policymakers make decisions based on evidence. So our mind model is, we produce fantastic data, that policymaker is waiting for that fantastic data to implement a fantastic policy that will be good for the people. But often now, these, these days, as you know, with fake news, alternative facts, there is a great mistrust in official statistics. And for some of you who have may read, there's a Guardian article about this, why we should fear um, in terms of why official statisticians are so, in some parts, badly regarded, and why we should fear what's coming next. Many, the population, about these facts and feelings. 
If we are not able to address the feelings of the citizens, we have a great deal of a problem to bring stuff, um, to, to have our nice and good products to the people and to the citizens. So I just wanted to throw this as a second important point um, for, for your consideration. Now, um, is it, uh, now looking forward, a few ideas about um, where can we go from here? Um, and this is, um, it has been mentioned by, um, also by Mr. President, in terms of uh, Paris 21 has started to work on this uh, for two years now with its partners, it's a, it's a global partnership, um, strengthening national capacity, so it's very much in our sort of DNA to think about those questions. There are many sort of uh, ongoing uh, sort of reflections. We are working toward guidelines. You can go to our website, but I just wanted to give you maybe two or three pointers what we, what we think. The first point is we have to think much broader about capacity development than in the past. In the past, our mind model has been on people. So we train, if we think about capacity development, we think about training Marina, Johannes, Haishan, and others, right? The, what we should think about is to strengthen ESTAD, Paris 21, and the World Bank, or uh, the Statistic Office. And even if we are more smarter, we should think about the the guiding institutional principles that guide ESTAD, Paris 21, and, um, and the World Bank. So what is meaning, what do I mean with this? It means the laws that govern, the informal and formal laws that govern the statistical system of Serbia. Of course, the statistical system of Serbia will be influenced by the statistical law, by funding mechanisms, by some informal rules of norms of behavior in your office, which has been shaped by some stuff. So if we don't look at it, we can do so much technical training as we want, it will not have a lasting impact. It's more complicated, it's more difficult, there's no easy solution, but ignoring it doesn't help either. So I think that's, that's very important, and I just wanted to mention that point. And last but not least, um, incentives. Uh, just one little story to conclude for those who work with, with poor countries and with, like we do, lots of training, the per diem business. You, you all know about the per diem business? I mean, many of, so we do a lot of training. So we invite these people to come to a training on data collection exercises, so these people come and we pay them per diem. And the per diem is often more interesting than staying in the office. So the incentive for the person and for the head to decide who comes to the training might not be necessarily the people who really need the training, might be because uh, he wants that person to get the per diem or somebody who is more powerful says, I go to this training. So all these people sit happily in the training, get the per diem, but not necessarily uh, the people whom we want to train. So often we are not really considering those incentives, why people should behave, why behave they as they do in these kinds of operations. So often good intentions, but not necessarily the bad outcomes, um, or the, the best outcomes. So with these few remarks, I hope uh, I have waked your ap appetite for looking at our website and helping us with these guidelines. I think there's no, uh, there's no magic bullet, uh, but I think we should also be honest to say New, new stuff is needed, but we also should think about the old stuff which is still out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johannes. Cooperation and uh, partnership uh, with others is essential to plan uh, capacity development uh, activities and to maximize uh, their impact. The World Bank's Development uh, Data Group as a relevant and strategic role to strengthen capacity of statistical system in developing countries. It uh, aspires uh, to develop effective and efficient uh, national statistical systems and to promote a culture of evidence-based decision making and implementation. There is a special attention to support countries to develop and assess their national statistical strategy to identify sectors for specific and technical improvements. Efforts are made on providing training, improving production in uh, key areas aiming uh, to fill data gaps, linked to the need for monitoring the sustainable development goals, experimenting with innovative uh, approaches in gathering, producing, and using data, and uh, making government data more accessible. I would like also to mention the Center for Development Data, a Rome-based uh, hub for fostering methodological innovation, providing uh, specialized technical assistance and strengthening capacity in household surveys, 
in low and middle income countries. It is coordinated by the Living Standard Measurement Study Team in the World Bank's Development Data Group, with whom ISTAT is actively collaborating. Today, we are very pleased to have uh, Ashton Fu, the director of World Bank's uh, Development Data Group, which has had a long flight to participate uh, to this conference. Please, Aishan, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, but also for this little present you gave all of us. I think this is very symbolic. Yes, I think with how the world is changing so fast and how the data technology and data ecosystem is evolving so fast, we're definitely together trying to find our way. And uh, as the wisdom says, when you travel together, you travel far. So it's really in this spirit, I just want to share a few thoughts. Um, indeed, I'm from the World Bank Development Data Group. Uh, we pride ourselves as the one-stop stop, one stop, one stop shop uh, for development data in, in the institution because we think we do data from farm to tables, meaning we not only really work with countries uh, visiting farms to help them collect data, for example, through household surveys. But also, uh, we have uh, staff working so hard to compile those development data to inform uh, the world through the very well-known world, world development indicators, but also um, to really uh, try to innovative, to transform those data through um, uh, creative, uh, attractive uh, visualizations to really convey the truthful information to sh help shape the public uh, mind. So it's really within this hope I want to uh, emphasize uh, three thoughts. It's very hard to be um, the sixth or the seventh speaker when you talk about this topic. Actually, there's a lot new that we can really come up with because there are indeed a lot of existing persistent issues that we want to address. But anyhow, uh, let me just try to emphasize the following three thoughts. First, when we look for capacity development at this particular juncture, we really need to balance between doing the mundane and doing the cruel. Uh, what I mean is that, as uh, Johannes uh, um, stressed very beautifully, the digital technology offered us a lot of new possibilities, but the way to collect data through some of the most established means, the traditional means, are still the primary source of uh, social uh, uh, de economic development for many low-income and middle-income countries, and at the same time, they are increasingly recognized as the source or reference for ground choosing those uh, new data sources. So we have to uh, continue to help countries to strengthen their capacity to do this kind of core business better. And at the bank, uh, we have been supporting countries' national statistical system for the last 40-some years. Um, this is not only through technical support, through our engagement in the development of standards and tools, methodologies, but also through specialized technical assistance. At the same time, as the development bank, through channeling financing to country. Um, here, we not only have uh, multi-donor trust funds, such as the Trust Fund for Statistical Capacity Development, which over the past 17-some uh, years have channeled over $125 million to support over 370-some operational projects to, from uh, supporting uh, strategy development to um, promoting open data and so on and so forth. But at the same time, they also really function as a catalytic for channeling more uh, larger scale financing through IDA and RBRD uh, grants or, or, or lending to countries. Um, for example, um, right now in Africa region alone, we have 27 active IDA and IBRD projects averaging 20 to 30 million dollars. Um, but how we can ensure those resources that are used smartly to really generate sustainable result is a challenge that we must face. At the same time, we're also really um, advocating and supporting banks' investment in the basic infrastructure in countries which will provide the kind of digitized uh, 
data architecture, allowing us to look at new solutions. This includes the new initiative uh, called the Digital Development for Africa, including ID4D initiative. This is about um, digitized uh, legal um, and uh, documentation initiative that connecting with the digital development and CRVS and so on and so forth. We believe unless we also help invest in the basic infrastructure, um, invest in the institution, inst invest in the new legal arrangement, um, training alone of uh, human resources will not have long lasting impact. And here I'm really glad to, see, to say that um, we are balancing supporting traditional data collection as well as supporting innovative data uh, solutions. Just in the past two, three years, we have channeled um, more than 16 millions towards uh, uh, filling data gaps for household survey data for poverty um, assessment um, in over 40 some countries. But at the same time, also channeling data to support those data that will lead to local actions through um, um, uh, collaborative uh, initiative that involving national statistical offices as well as private sector and civil society organizations. Here, the project includes, uh, for example, using mobile technology to help track where refugees go, uh, from using satellite images to monitor illegal fishing in South Africa, so on and so forth. So those are the ones that, beyond just monitoring the broader trend of development, but also information lead to local action. Um, the second thought um, I want to um, stress um, is that technical capacity building really need to go beyond helping uh, production of better data, um, traditional new. Um, it's really important to build capacity in how data is used. I'm really glad um, uh, Johannes has mentioned this very um, prominently. I think maybe many of you were at the recent uh, European um, Conference of European Statisticians. I'm really glad um, they have a special seminar dedicated to getting our message across, strategic reflection on modernizing statistical communication. I really agree, um, convening messages in, a, in this post-truth world, um, knowing our audiences, understanding how they really get their data, in what format is very important. And at the same time, we really also need to uh, understand how the in statistical information could be shared that, uh, uh, in, in, in stories that really help people to relate to them. So um, here that um, what uh, the bank has been doing, uh, I'll just give you some quick um, uh, effort we're making to explore how we, keep, we can become much better in making statistics uh, relate to people's experiences, therefore lead to how they shape their perspective of the world and also take actions to hold uh, the government accountable. First um, is that uh, we just released the 2018 edition of the World Bank's Atlas of Sustainable Development Goals, which takes a visual approach uh, to commu communicate the trend, data, and measurement issues around the 18 or 17 SDGs with over 180 annotated data visualization, which are very easy to understand. Um, one of the data point data that we showed uh, are, are as such, which really help us to see um, how information translates from a broad level to a local uh, level. For example, for the air, air um, pollutions, um, we not only present the standard indicator at national level, which allow you to see you know, across the world how it varies across countries. We also show sub-regional uh, verica uh, verifications among countries, for example, India and China. But at the same time, we also present information from a sensor from an India Technical University that allow people to really look at the seasonal variation in, in a city, which would give the citizens or residents a sense that what they need to do to protect their own health, also to call upon the local government to, to take action to, to um, resolve the, the problem. So it's really through this uh, you know, differentiated information that we can really help shape people's uh, mind and also their actions. One thing that I really want to impress you upon is that this product, uh, for every um, visualization, we not only make the data openly available, we also make the code associated with each of them available. Because our new motto is really open data, 
open code and open knowledge that really transform the statistical information into something that people can be really relate to and, and uh, shape up their perspective. Second um, is to, through the support of data innovation. This is really a collaborative uh, approach um, to really foster the partnership between uh, national statistical uh, agencies with the private sector and, and, and NSOs. I mentioned some of the um, examples and I just want to say um, for those uh, pilot or experimental uh, work to succeed, it's very important for us to connect the users of this data with you know, the producers. So for some of the project, for example, in Africa, for a clinic to use a mobile phone technology to, to track their, um, their um, patients to see who are less likely to return for the um, uh, necessary treatment, it's really working with the clinic to develop this uh, application. So therefore, it can be directly used. Thirdly, is through the data literacy program. It's just as direct as it is it's really to help uh, increase the data literacy, um, not just among data, uh, government uh, officials and policy makers, but going beyond to the civil societies and, and the media and, and, uh, and the citizens. And here, I won't go into any detail, but just want to mention that you know we have been working with a lot of partners and developing a menu of services in more than 30 countries. Um, we uh, do it through a code uh, fellowship in which we really involve data scientists with the civic uh, technologies directly wor in working in the newsroom to support media and the civil society organizations to translate statistics into real uh, stories. Um, and we're also working uh, with um, um, uh, Google and Code for Africa to launch a data literacy capacity building program for over 5,000 journalists uh, in 12 countries across nine countries to really experiment how we can indeed help um, to increase uh, capacity in this area. Thirdly and lastly, and without uh, elaborating new partnership, we all know the kind of challenges that national statistical agencies, uh, institutions facing are really broad. We really must uh, uh, open ourselves and collect with others. This is not only about working with new data producers in the private uh, sectors, in civil societies, but also among ourselves. This is where I'm really happy you mentioned that uh, we have been strengthening our uh, partnership through our uh, Rome uh, Data Hub um, to work with, uh, uh, you know, with support from uh, um, um, Bank of Italy and also uh, Italian aid agency to connect us with uh, regional um, uh, institution and sub-regional training centers in Africa to try to fill the data gap um, or the skill gap in, in um, doing um, um, hustle surveys better. All of this to say that now that we, 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 we're facing a lot of new challenges that none of us knew everything well enough, um, a lot of unknowns and certainties uh, ahead of us. That's why I think it's really wonderful to have such dialogue and, and communication so that we can together explore what are the basic principles need to guide our, our approach in exploring some of those unknown or ch uh, unchartered uh, paths, but to come up with a constructive uh, approach so that we can really get the best result possible. So thank you very much for this. <laughs> Thank you, Aisham. Data is a key driver of transformation across uh, all sectors, enabling governments uh, to achieve national policy objectives. According to the principle of national ownership, countries are chiefly responsible for gathering data. However, international agencies can lend assistance by strengthening national capacities and ensuring that data are comparable and aggregated at sub-regional, regional, and global levels. FAO is uh, recognized as having uh, a fundamental global role in developing uh, methods and standards for food and agriculture statistics, and in providing uh, technical assistance that can help countries meet the new monitoring challenges. Strengthening its uh, work in gathering and analyzing data, FAO is uh, at the front 
forefront of innovation to collect and capture information, striking uh, new partnerships and investing in novel equipment from Earth observation satellites to mobile devices to aerial drones. Going beyond SDG indicators, FAO provides data on and statistical support to several countries and it is aware of the value of capacity development. ISTAT has a long tradition of collaboration with FAO and I'm pleased uh, to have today Pietro Gennari, Chief uh, Statistician of the Food and Agriculture Organization. Please Pietro, the floor is yours. Thank you, Giorgio. Good afternoon to everybody. And uh, I would like also to mention the uh, long uh, uh, experience of collaboration between ISTAT and uh, FAO um, in supporting countries, in ex exchanging expertise, in uh, also uh, working with the World Bank uh, in this uh, data center in uh, uh, building capacity at country level. I had prepared the presentation, but of course many things uh, um, have uh, uh, been said already. Um, my perspective is uh, uh, the perspective of an international organization which has a, a, a quite a big responsibility in terms of uh, um, support to countries on uh, SDG uh, monitoring. We are uh, the custodian agency of uh, 21 uh, indicators and plus contributing to other five, so more than 10% of the overall indicator framework is, uh, uh, let's say, supported uh, by FAO. And uh, um, so my perspective, my uh, angle, um, view angle is from uh, the SDG implementation and what are the new challenges, uh, the old challenges uh, that adds to the old challenges in uh, monitoring uh, SDGs, at the same time, <coughs> Uh, the need of moving from uh, a only data production approach to a more integrated holistic approach that looks at the all, overall data cycle from uh, the data production until the data use. So, um, but uh, I, uh, since we are here also to as uh, providing maybe different perspective uh, to the same problem, uh, also um, having a bit of a different spin from what uh, Johannes said uh, before. So my point of view, I mean, Johannes' point of view was more critical of what uh, has been done so far and uh, 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 of uh, emphasizing what are the new um, activities and new approaches that have to be taken uh, in, uh, in SDG uh, monitoring. Um, I have a less uh, critical view of what has happened so far. Uh, to me, uh, even the MDG process was a very important process for many countries. Um, uh, fundamental social statistics were produced for the first time in many countries. And if we look at the situation in MDG monitoring, uh, and we compare the situation at the beginning uh, of the MDG period, at the end of the MDG period, there were a much larger number of countries that were uh, able to produce many more indicators and also uh, do trend analysis. So we need to use the SDG as an opportunity uh, for improving the overall statistical system. And of course, this can be done only if we understand uh, exactly what are the challenges at country level. Um, and to me, yeah, some of the challenges have been uh, mentioned, but Again, data production is, a, is a still a very fundamental challenge. Uh, at the moment, in the uh, global SDG database, we don't have any data for 100 indicators. And uh, um, for uh, 70, a bit more than 70 indicators, we have less than uh, uh, 50 countries, 50% uh, of the countries reporting. So there is a huge challenge still in terms of uh, uh, data production. Um, as we mentioned, we have uh, uh, many new areas uh, on which data needs to be produced that are not the traditional area where st official statistics are produced. So um, the, uh, this is a, 
of course, a new challenge. The fact that the National Statistical Office is called upon not only to produce data, but also to uh, coordinate, but to validate the production, to provide quality assurance to data produced by other uh, producers at country level, which is something that um, uh, is a new task for uh, many national statistical offices. Um, the aspect of uh, uh, data disaggregation, that uh, it's also a, something um, that is, uh, on which there is a sp specific and strong emphasis in the SDG agenda. So many of these aspects are old, but are um, in a way at a new qualitative level because the uh, uh, scale of, uh, of uh, indicators, the range of indicators, the uh, domains that are involved, the disaggregation aspects uh, involved, a new, <laughs> in a way, poses per se a new challenge. Um, the key aspect that needs to be uh, addressed then are of course, institutional coordination, as we said uh, before, um, at a new level, because new data uh, producers come into play. Um, the, uh, in a way, the possibility of, uh, and so the emphasis, by the way, of uh, Paris 21 on uh, national planning and uh, the possibility of uh, mainstreaming SDG production in the national statistical plan is uh, uh, something that uh, needs to be uh, of course, uh, emphasized. And the uh, use of alternative data sources for reducing uh, the cost of the data collection. On the um, aspect of if capacity development, this is the second point, if it is supply driven or demand driven. Um, uh, in a way, the SDG agenda are built on the premises of country ownership and uh, uh, the whole agenda has been uh, developed by countries. The indicators have been uh, uh, chosen and selected by countries. And um, uh, countries have also come up, and I'm in a way surprised that nobody mentioned this because having here uh, Giorgio and uh, also Johannes, uh, have developed the uh, Cape Town Global Action Plan for uh, SDG uh, implementation, SDG monitoring, which is a country-led, uh, global action plan that identifies six strategic areas for the improvement of the national statistical system and to enable countries to monitor the SDG. And that covers, and it's very comprehensive, it covers all the aspects of the data cycle, including the use of data. Um, and so um, if we look at this uh, plan and if we think that uh, this represents only uh, a global framework no, for orienting, for uh, guiding the initiatives of the different uh, players, the many different players uh, that are providing capacity development support uh, uh, to countries. Um, if the work of the um, international agencies or the uh, agencies at country, regional agencies at country level, uh, are aligned to the uh, Cape Town Action Plan, we have, in a way, an assurance that uh, this is, uh, in reality, uh, demand-driven because it's trying to respond to the uh, demand that are coming from countries. And it's not looking at uh, um, SDG only in an opportunistic way, but uh, trying to leverage the SDG production for the, um, for building the overall statistical system, building not only the capacity, the skill uh, of uh, the, the staff, but also the institutional setup, the infrastructure, and the overall uh, um, survey programs or data collection programs at country level. So um, the, uh, um, the other point that I wanted to make is the fact that uh, um, there is a clear division of labor that has been uh, uh, decided at the international level for um, providing support uh, to countries and to, uh, um, in general, uh, uh, facilitate uh, the uh, reporting on SDG. Um, and uh, so 
according to this, uh, um, uh, let's say, division of responsibilities, um, for each indicator, uh, we have one, at least one international agency that has been identified as custodian, which has the, uh, so, which means that uh, uh, this international agency, this custodian agency is responsible for uh, developing the methodologies and providing the documentation, the guidelines for, um, for countries to collect and uh, disseminate and use data, uh, lead the campaign capacity development effort uh, in the, the specific area uh, related to the indicators, collect national data, harmonize the data, and disseminate the data at global level, and produce global reports, and at the same time, help countries to um, develop their own uh, national SDG reports and na voluntary national reviews. So, and there is a strong emphasis within the international community to respect the resp this responsibility. Uh, there is a document that was uh, uh, presented at the Statistical Commission this year that was addressing the problem of data flows and uh, how we can ensure that uh, the data flows, um, we have an order and smooth uh, uh, flows of data from the national statistical system to the international statistical system. And one of the uh, key uh, request from countries is that there is only one agency col collecting data on uh, uh, the specific, on each specific indicator. So, and this means that the custodian agency should be the only one uh, to collect the information, uh, avoiding so to uh, add burden on, on countries and sharing the data with all the other international agencies that are involved, that are interested in this information. But to me, this should go beyond the data collection and the reporting on data, should go also towards the uh, uh, capacity development. So also for capacity development, uh, in order not to uh, create confusion in countries, um, we need to have uh, the custodian agency leading the uh, capacity development efforts in that uh, thematic uh, specific areas. And so we have, um, um, of course, this doesn't mean that uh, only uh, that agency can or uh, provide support to countries for that area. Um, partnership and, uh, is uh, a key word, and this is the third point. Um, uh, in uh, ne no uh, UN agency can alone uh, provide the support needed for building a capacity in all countries. Um, and so the, we think that there are many different ways of partnering across different agencies uh, with countries to um, uh, uh, enable countries to produce uh, and use this information, this new information. Um, and we are building partnership with a number of agencies um, in, in different areas. So one quick win is, of course, for example, not to come up with new data sources, but to um, exploit uh, the uh, potential of uh, household surveys in uh, being a, a tool for collecting information and new information. There is a specific group of the UN Statistical Commission that has been created for um, uh, understanding and uh, uh, promoting the use of household survey, survey for uh, monitoring the SDGs. And uh, um, a, a, an assessment has been done on what are, what is currently, what are currently the indicators that are monitored by household surveys and what could be the potential of household surveys in many countries for monitoring the SDGs. Um, so following this uh, lead and uh, contributing to this work, we have developed um, uh, some uh, modules, modules of questionnaire modules of few questions that can be included in, um, in nationally representative household surveys being uh, uh, funded by the national governments or internationally led. So uh, for monitoring food security, we have a, a module that uh, we um, have introduced together with the World Bank and with the World Food Program. Uh, for monitoring access to land, uh, there is a collaboration ongoing with the UN Women and uh, UNSD to include a set of questions for uh, collecting information on 
um, access to land and to other economic resources um, for the um, um, mo for monitoring uh, 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 productivity and income of farms and uh, especially of uh, smallholder we have uh, the collaboration with the World Bank uh, IFAD and uh, and um, uh, ISTA to uh, develop integrated uh, household survey program uh, that uh, can collect not only information on um, economic information on the farm but also uh, social information on the livelihood of the family that is running the farm and uh, environmental information and uh, for the use of increasing the use of geospatial information we have a collaboration with uh, geoglam the european spatial agent space agencies uh, that uh, can help not only to monitor um, certain specific indicators that are related to land cover and land use mapping, so forest cover and, and other indicators, but also to help to um, uh, build the uh, infrastructure for agricultural survey and to make it more cost effective and efficient. Um, for these are more sectoral initiative, for more cross-cutting initiative, of course, uh, um, and to uh, help uh, um, National Statistical Office building the institutional setup. Uh, we have an ongoing collaboration that uh, has been built in the past to um, uh, improve the development of the NSDSs, uh, starting from uh, the a sectoral approach for uh, having a, uh, sectoral plans that uh, then can be consolidated in the in a new generation of NSDS that uh, can mainstream um, uh, SDGs and the SDG produ production, and um, uh, for the um, uh, use of SDG indicators, uh, um, the open data, uh, open data program that has been running for some years and has affected mainly household surveys so far, um, uh, we are trying to extend it to agricultural survey and agricultural census to make this data available in the public domain and so allow all the research community and the universities and the, the civil society to uh, make use of the data that are produced that otherwise remain in the drawer of the um, uh, national statistical offices. So uh, I think that uh, uh, through partnerships as uh, I shall mentioned, we can um, really make a difference in terms of uh, SDG monitoring in, uh, in, uh, in every country and help to um, uh, achieve this ambitious uh, agenda, which <laughs> is even considered impossible for the, uh, uh, how big and uh, how many indicators, how many different uh, areas uh, involves. So I stop here, thank you. Thank you, Pietro. ISTAT is very <laughs> active in uh, international cooperation projects, aiming at strengthening the statistical capacity of transition and developing uh, countries, and at supporting candidate countries in lining up with the standards of the European statistical system, and for new challenges uh, at global level. Is that uh, technical assistance is addressed in several regions, uh, providing uh, technical support on institutional building, modernization, and other cross-cutting topics, uh, as well as for the production of statistics uh, on specific statistical domain. Going uh, at the end of the session, we are a little late, I would like to give the floor to Marina Gandolfo, head of the International Fair Office of Istat for some final remarks. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, President. Uh, I think that uh, we have to, to run a bit. Um, I would like just to say that it's quite uh, clear also by this uh, several very important and relevant intervention that the capacity development is becoming very important. The, uh, um, the implementation of the uh, agenda uh, uh, 2030 and especially the Cape Town Global Action Plan 
mentioned clearly the effort that uh, we have to do to strengthen the national statistical system is one of the uh, priorities. Uh, but uh, it's also important to uh, remember that uh, within this plan, uh, one of the key actions is uh, to conduct needs assessment of national statistical capacity and assessment of available resources that we can use to address uh, these needs, including not only training, but also technical cooperation and uh, sharing best practice uh, uh, offered by, uh, by the countries. So uh, we also uh, think that uh, uh, this uh, uh, effort has to be devoted to modernize uh, statistics. And uh, um, we have to consider that uh, uh, to build sustainable capacity uh, it means also to develop these skills. And in this respect, uh, Joanne has, has gone, but uh, we are also uh, aware that it's important to uh, mention soft skills. Uh, in, uh, to meet the challenges of SDGs and beyond, because we have to think not only on SDGs as a challenge, but we have to, go, uh, to see uh, over. Uh, so uh, it is uh, uh, a strategic uh, priority, uh, especially for those countries that has less developed national statistical system, and we have to invest uh, in this. I would like also to mention that is not uh, uh, mentioned today that uh, also at the uh, UNESCO, I mean, uh, uh, the president has uh, mentioned that also at uh, the UNESCO region, uh, in the implementation of the roadmap on statistics, uh, the effort is really high now also on capacity development. And in fact, has been uh, established a task team on capacity development, in which, uh, by the way, also Paris 21 is, uh, uh, is involved. Uh, it is important to have a vision. Therefore, we are very happy to see that also in the European statistical system, there, is, there has to be a vision. And uh, Italy, I think, that is ready to contribute in this reflection uh, to, uh, to go over and to understand how we can move with technical uh, cooperation. As uh, uh, has been mentioned by, uh, by Mariana, and uh, uh, it is uh, quite clear the value of expertise of the National Statistical uh, <laughs> Institute. And here I can show you that uh, it's quite visible also by these results from the donor coordination survey. It's a very recent one. And uh, only taking the total. And uh, we will see that uh, the <laughs> implementing agency that uh, we, we are mentioning also the National Statistical Institute. In this is included also ISTAT. And uh, we see that uh, the effort is going more in the general horizontal issue, and it's actually uh, what you are mentioning, because we have uh, here is included uh, the institutional building, the uh, legal framework, the infrastructure, and then it's followed by um, macroeconomic statistics, so in the core of the production, business statistics, social statistics, and so on. And we will see also that there's not any more uh, traineeship, but we are moving to have uh, expert mission, study visits. So this is something that uh, uh, is uh, uh, moving is moving on. So uh, we are uh, uh, absolutely aware that we have to uh, push on statistical capacity development. It's part of our commitment, <coughs> and uh, it's been mentioned several times. Coordination. We are absolutely aware that coordination is also mentioned in Cape Town and not only, is extremely important. What does it mean? Uh, practically, I think that we should uh, invest a lot in understand who is doing what in the area in which we are supporting capacity development. Uh, I can uh, make a, a, an example very um, recent in a cooperation project in Vietnam um, that is financed by the, uh, our in a national cooperation uh, before going there, uh, I've spoken with uh, Paris 21 because we know that, that they have done a global assessment in that countries on statistics. So use it, and we have a use it, as well as uh, uh, understand that World Bank is there. So uh, it means, uh, uh, and so the EU delegation, so the Commission. So it is important to understand and to map. So I think that this is one of the investment that we have to do together mapping as much as possible who is doing what, but it's not enough. We have to dialogue with all the actors that are in those areas to really help 
to really support uh, the countries. It means also to identify the gaps in respect of the needs of the countries to avoid overlaps. So, uh, but uh, we have also to assess the needs in terms of uh, understand similar needs because what happened in, uh, in, uh, in Serbia, we can really uh, uh, understand the similar needs and promoting some tools that we can do by statistical capacity development that can be reusable. And this is exactly what Mira was, uh, was mentioning. So, and then we have to match. We have to match uh, uh, supply, uh, supply uh, with uh, um, involving all the partners. I'm coming to the end. I have to say that uh, I don't have any more here, yes. <laughs> Some of you have seen this. Well, I have to say that uh, uh, today was quite clear that uh, cooperation and partnership are, are key point. Uh, uh, is needed uh, also to plan uh, capacity development activities and uh, uh, this is uh, to uh, to use uh, uh, you can also use this because uh, in this way you can uh, uh, see your lighthouse and uh, to leave no one behind thank you